Well, Jamie Jenkins is a former head of health analysis at the ONS. Good morning, Jamie. Morning, Ollie. Um, always a little bit um, cautious about any figures that come out after a weekend, especially a bank holiday weekend. So, um, how, how can how, how should we how should we take this figure of, of no deaths reported yesterday? Well, yes, yeah, it's, it's great news to to see no deaths, and but I think another wider statistic that probably offers some room for optimism as well, Ollie, is that. Uh, the ONS will be publishing more information later where we look at the overall number of deaths in the country. And, and if you look at the, across the UK, in particular in Wales as well, um, one of the things we've talked about over the last uh, year or so is the like excess deaths, which are how many deaths over and above average for the time of year. And, and they've actually been below average for over two months now. So we've not just seen you know, the dramatic decline in COVID deaths, but just generally the number of deaths in the country are below average, which is a good sign that kind of we were over the, the second wave of the pandemic quite a while ago now. And, and the and the data has consistently been coming down. Now, we, it's going to be difficult to continue to have kind of zero COVID deaths uh, continuing because even in last month, we had, say, more flu deaths than we did COVID deaths in, in Wales and across England as well. So you're always going to get these deaths, but it was a good indicator yesterday that, there were no deaths and we are seeing in Wales and, and across other parts of the UK in general, uh, the people in hospital are coming down. We are seeing in the northwest of England rises in cases and a slight uptick in kind of the number of people going into hospital linked to the Indian variant. But that rise that's in the northwest seems to be contained there at the moment and it's not really spreading across the rest of, say, England and over into Wales. Well, that's what you've done. You've outlined there, haven't you, Jamie, the two columns that the that the Cabinet will consider um, tomorrow, which is, it, on, on the one hand, the relatively low case rates now and that zero deaths figure, the other, the Indian variant. And uh, they're going to have to make an assessment about uh, how much caution is required and what sort of caution is proportionate to the threat that that poses. What do the figures tell us about the threat of the Indian variant in Wales? Yeah, so, so the Indian variant, we're not seeing, every time, Ollie, they've been easing restrictions. We haven't really seen any major spike. So over the last, say, month where every time we've had these three-week reviews and some restrictions have been eased, we have seen a few localised outbreaks. So uh, about a month ago in, in, say, Newport, and then a couple of weeks ago in Cardiff, we saw a little spike where we saw outbreaks, some of them linked to schools. But then... That hasn't led to wider community transmission. What's happened is about a week later, as those cases have kind of peaked up, they've come back down again. Uh, more recently in Monmouthshire and Bridgem, we've seen the same thing. So that's a positive because when we were having these spikes kind of last year and we went into the winter, they were spiking up, but then they were growing and then spreading out wider to different parts of the kind of the community and Wales. Now, with the Indian variant that's in the northwest, I've been looking at the data there and and it seems to be affecting more younger people. So if you look at England, which is a good indicator as to what may happen in Wales, the the kind of the people who are at most risk are the people over the age of 70. And with the, the vaccine rollout, it's clearly having an effect because at the height of the second wave in England, you were seeing that about 10% of the cases and over 30,000 people in a seven-day period, the cases were over the age of 70. Now, the average age of people catching COVID in England has kept coming down, similar to what we're seeing in Wales. So we're not seeing the same link that we saw in the past mm. where people were catching COVID, going into hospital, then some ended up in ICU and then some dying. The vaccine's clearly having an effect. So that's another variable that's in the mix in that whilst cases are rising in more in the northwest, and I, ex- I would expect cases as you ease more, to rise more in Wales as well. We're not seeing that go into people in the hospital. So and across Wales, the good news there is that the number of people in hospital, Ollie, has kept coming down. The and then the most recent data that the Welsh government published, there were there were only seven patients with confirmed COVID across the whole of Wales, where back in January it was over sixteen hundred. So there's no pressure on the NHS at the moment. And and all these variables are quite positive. That the thing I think we've got to look out for is in England, they're talking about whether or not they unlock everything by June the 21st. I know the First Minister hasn't made similar promises in Wales. And that might be a useful kind of experiment that if England do unlock more, we can track how things are going in England versus Wales to see 
what restrictions do actually do. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. That's Jamie Jenkins, former head of health analysis at the ONS.